first. Oh, hold on, go back. Let me talk. Stand if you are able, and if you have palm branches, start waving them and shouting, Hosanna! 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 What a wonderful way to start our Palm Sunday service with a parade. The, the younger kids coming in with their palm branches, the confirmation kids parading in. Welcome to Westminster Presbyterian Church. If you're visiting with us today, we are so pleased that you are here. Whether you're here in person or via the live stream or YouTube, evidently we have someone hopefully tuning in from France to see Charlie confirmed. Isn't that wonderful? So they're worldwide this morning. We welcome you and we hope that you find the peace of Christ as we worship today. I do uh, invite you all to register your attendance with us on the registration tablet. You'll find at the end of each of the pews as you do that. I do have just a couple of brief announcements to make, mostly about the schedule for this next week, Holy Week. Wednesday night, our normal Wednesday night activities won't be happening with one very important exception. Right, Barb? Choir will rehearse. They'll rehearse 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock for choir. Everybody else, we don't have our normal Wednesday night activities. But Thursday, we have our Monday, Thursday service here in the sanctuary at 7 o'clock. I, I really hope that you all can be here for that. It is just to go from Palm Sunday, the celebration of Palm Sunday, the celebration of Easter, without coming during a Holy Week, we miss the passion of Christ. We miss the meaning of what's going on. So I invite you all to be here Thursday night for a very meaningful service. Uh, and then next Sunday is Easter Sunday, and the choir will be bringing us the message in song. It, it's always Beautiful. We cannot wait. I know Barb has been so excited for this. Uh, so it'll be a magnificent service. I hope you can all come. There's lots of other things going on here at church. So please look at your bulletin so you don't miss anything. Get, get all those dates on your calendar now. If there are no more announcements to be said, let's call ourselves to worship. Who is this unlikely king? Why does he ride into the city? Let us wave our palms, throw down our cloaks. Stand if you're able and let's sing together, Hosanna, loud Hosanna.
word for today, in case you couldn't tell, is Hosanna, which means save us. Save us, which is a fitting word today because we cannot save ourselves. We try, but we cannot. Jesus came to do that. So as we come to confess our sins, let's do so clothing ourselves in Christ. Join us in prayer. Oh, Lord. Hosanna, we pray. Save us, Lord. Save us from ourselves. When we trip over pride, doubt, or fear, save us from the systems that keep us bound. When we cannot see the way out, save us from our sins. When we feel their weight pressing on our hearts, our lives are in your hands. Deliver us from evil. Save us by your steadfast love. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Friends, we, we do not earn God's love. We do not earn God's grace. God's love and grace is for all. Jesus came to save us all. So hear and believe the good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory be to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. I invite you to turn to one another and pass the peace of Christ and find at least one person you do not know and pass them the peace of Christ as well. Peace be with you. It's so good to see you this morning. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. <laughs> so you feel relieved? <laughs> so you can feel some peace. <laughs> peace be with you.
invite children to come down and bring your palms with you, children. When you come down, bring your palms. You guys did such a good parade this morning. So have you ever celebrated in a, um, or participated in a celebration? Yeah. When? <laughs> when did you celebrate? Yeah, birthdays. What about today? Did you celebrate today? That's what today is about. Today is a celebration about Jesus. And the story I'm going to tell you today is probably familiar with you, but palms are a big part of this story. And palms are mentioned in the Bible that people waved them. And so what they did with Jesus over 2,000 years ago today, you did today. Just exactly like that. They, they, the only difference when you walked in is that Jesus wasn't with you on a donkey. But we are remembering that day. And I want to tell you that story. <clears throat> and then we'll, I want to show you some pictures of that story. So Jesus was going to go into Jerusalem and he was outside the city with his, some of his disciples. And he said to his disciples, Go into, the, into Jerusalem, and you'll see a donkey there. Untie the donkey and bring it to me. If anybody asks you, why are you taking the donkey? You are to say, because the Lord needs it, and he'll bring it back to you. And so they did exactly as Jesus asked. They walked into Jerusalem. There was a donkey. Jesus even knew it had never been ridden before. They untied the donkey, started walking away, and guess what the people said? What are you doing? Why are you taking the donkey? And he said, because the Lord needs it, and he will get it back to you soon. So they brought the donkey to Jesus, and Jesus but they said that some of the disciples put their coats on the donkey. Hi, buddy. And they sat Jesus on the donkey, and he paraded into Jerusalem. And the people were happy. They were cheering. They were waving their palms, just like you did this morning. And I want to show you some pictures of that. Now, of course, there weren't any cameras, right? We don't have the real pictures, but a lot of artists. And I want you to get a sense of what this looked like. Wow. And um, there's th three different artists here, so they kind of look different. In this one, they have palms. A lot of the people are holding palms. And Jesus happens to be on a white donkey. The Bible doesn't say. I've never even seen a white donkey. The, the Bible doesn't say what color it was. But anyway, he's walking, and there's lots of people around him. Here's another one. Now, this one is kind of my favorite. Looks like Jesus just got a fresh haircut in this one. <laughs> it's really nice. Got him all spiffed up. Um, but see the people, how happy they are? And Jesus is on a donkey, and he's, he seems to be happy, too. And there's children, and there's adults. See them? Do you guys see those pictures? And then in the last one, it's a good idea to just picture that story in your mind, to see Jesus coming in on that donkey. And this one, this artist did it from behind Jesus. So you see, he's on the donkey, and the people are all around him. And again, the people are smiling, people are happy. This is a wonderful celebration that they're enjoying in Jerusalem today. Now, if this was the Romans having a parade, it would be way different. It would be huge white horses and beautiful chariots, and it would be a great big display of power. But Jesus comes in on a simple donkey, and people are thrilled that he is there. And they're shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna in the highest. And all the while, the people are waving their palm branches. It was a day of celebration in Jerusalem. And as the week goes on, that's not the case. Things turn and go down because Jesus was killed on that week. But on this day, it was very, very happy. This is a day that we can think, this is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And the same was true 2,000 years ago today. Please play, pray with me this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we celebrate today, just as those people celebrated in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago. This is the day that you have made we will rejoice and be glad in it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So remember that you have palms today, and palms were also available to children 2,000 years ago. Thank you for coming down this morning. As we hear our scripture this morning, let's first come to God in prayer, asking that our hearts and minds might be open to the word God would have for us today. Please pray with me. Merciful God, quiet within us every voice but yours. Speak to us now through the Holy Spirit that we may receive grace to show Christ's love and lives given to your service. Amen. Throughout uh, the last few months, you have seen the confirmation students, students doing all sorts of things during worship, from uh, ushering, greeting, being the acolyte, reading scripture. And the hope is you will continue to see them do that even after today, right? <laughs> Today we have another one of our wonderful students, Maggie Miller, is going to come and read our scripture for us today. A reading from the book of Mark, chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. As they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this, just say this. The Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this, untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as if it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Maggie. Wasn't that wonderful? They always do such a great job. Thank you. Everybody likes parades, right? We love parades. We don't like, maybe, we might not like crowds. We may not like noise. We may not like heat. In South Dakota, we may not like the cold. It's always debatable whether or not to go to the parade of lights, isn't it? But the parade? Love it. We love parades. I know when we lived in Texas, they had parades all the time. We were always taking our kids to parades. Then, you know, we'd come up to South Dakota to visit relatives. That was always on the holidays. There's always parades on the holidays, so we'd bring them to parades up here. I remember one Fourth of July, we came up, and, and 
you know, there were parades in all these little towns all over the place on different days, and so we were able to schedule two or three different places to go for the parades. It's nothing like a small town parade, is it? And we even introduced them to a pizza ranch at that time. They'd never seen one of those, so, you know, we had a parade and went to pizza ranch. That's a great day. I even went to a parade this last year. I went to the Augustana Homecoming Parade. Now, that is news for me to say that because growing up, ever since I can remember, my family has either been employed or associated with the University of Sioux Falls. Augustana has always been the enemy. <laughs> so the last place I would have ever dreamt of being at was at an Augustana Homecoming Parade. I was there, <clears throat> I have witnesses, uh, the Van Leers saw me there, the Van Dam saw me there. It was pouring, it was miserable out. I was cold, I was drenched, I was at a, a parade of a school I have never supported and, until my daughter decided to go there for no apparent reason. <laughs> but you know what, I had fun. It's a parade. Have you ever been to a parade that fell flat? I mean, imagine, imagine if you're about to go to uh, Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. You finally get to go, and you get there, and, and you go on that year, and that year they decide we're not doing any balloons. Santa forgets to show up, and all the Broadway actors are on strike. Or, or even worse, you, you finally get to go to the Rose Bowl parade, but the year you, you're going, they have some weird flower drought, and there's no flowers available, there's no floats. Could you imagine? How disappointed would you be? And now, I, I'm only talking about very trivial things here, right? Balloons, Santa, flowers the disappointment would be real. You would feel it. I want you to think of that disappointment. Hold on to the feeling you would have. And now I want you to transport yourself back 2,000 years ago to when Jesus is entering into Jerusalem for that parade. You can put yourself as part of the crowd, as part of one of Jesus' followers, as one of his disciples. It's a parade. And behind every parade, there is always a lot of organizing that has to be done behind the scenes, right? Uh, so the first thing you have to decide on is, where is the parade going to start? It's, it's often overlooked, but very important piece. This parade is going to start at the Mount of Olives. That's what the scripture tells us this morning, because that's Zechariah prophesied that is where the Messiah will be seen, that is where the Messiah will appear. Jesus even prepared a certain colt, told the disciples to go pick up that colt, even gave them a precise message to say if someone asked. We learned this morning during the children's sermon, Jesus probably even got a haircut. I did not know that, but uh, the palm branches, where did they come from? They didn't come from the trees by the road. It tells us in the scripture that, that they just got in the heat of the moment. No, it tells us in the scriptures today that they went into the fields, cut them down, so that they stockpiled them by the roads to hand out to people as they needed. They prepared for it. They even had people coming in before Jesus and coming behind Jesus, reciting Psalm 118. This is a pilgrimage psalm that was often sung or recited as people enter Jerusalem on pilgrimage, on, on, on events like the Passover. So this was prepared. You have to prepare a parade to have success. And it seemed like it was very successful because there are people now that are 
joining in. They're grabbing these palm branches. They're shouting, Hosanna, save us. They're getting excited. And then what happens next? I mean, this crowd is thinking, they see all the signs that are prepared in this parade. They're thinking, maybe this is the Messiah. Maybe this is the one we're waiting to come. Maybe this is the one that's going to free us, vanquish our enemies. Free us from the Romans. And what a time to do it. Passover, the feast of freedom. This is perfect. They are riled up. You know what happens next? We get, we're just like that crowd. We read this passage, we get excited too. This is great. Love the parade, the palms, it's wonderful. But this is how the passage ends. Jesus entered Jerusalem. He goes to the temple, takes a look around. And he leaves. He doesn't just leave the temple. He leaves the city. What? And, and, and the next thing we find out is the next day he, he enters Jerusalem again. No fanfare. What's going on? We were so excited. And, and nothing happened? How can that be it all seemed to just fall flat and yet isn't our palm sundays often the same we come we rejoice we get so excited for the parade and then we go home anything change many of us wonder at times in our lives what difference does faith make? This is something important I hope you hear, confirmation students. Uh, sometimes you're going to come and you're going to celebrate and you're going to feel excited about faith and everything's going great and then you go home and has anything changed? We come on on big celebrations at the church. We come on Christmas, we come on Easter, we come on Palm Sunday, even Pentecost. Sometimes we feel something, and if we're honest, sometimes we just feel empty. We're like those people that were at the parade 2,000 years ago. We're asking Jesus, are you the one? Are you, will you save us? Will you save us from oppression? Will you save us from ourselves? Will you save us from emptiness? Will you change us? Will you change the world? And Jesus' response is yes. Absolutely yes. Just not in the way that you're expecting. I can understand why those in the crowd, the followers of Christ, even the disciples, that they didn't get what was going on on Palm Sunday, that they um, misunderstood and, and probably were very disappointed at the end of the day. I understand that. I'm not sure I understand why we, 2,000 years ago, still don't get it. We've had 2,000 years to figure this out. We've had 2,000 years to see and understand what it is that Jesus is doing here. That Jesus is inviting us into a, a kingdom that's ruled by vulnerability, not strength. Love, not might. Mercy, not power. Do we get that? Do we get that? Because when I look around at the church at large, seems to me that there's a whole lot of people that are seeking a kingdom based on might and power and strength. They say, wouldn't it be easier if God just laid down the law? 
But would we be free then? Where's the grace in that? Being vulnerable. Showing mercy. Loving others. That's our calling. It's not easy. I think a lot of times we're waiting for a different calling to come. An easier one. This is what Jesus calls us to do. And Jesus shows us that when we do these things, our life is changed. And those around us, the world has changed too. And if enough of us live in that kingdom, the world will be significantly different. Don't get caught up in all the fanfare so that you miss Jesus' much deeper message. Question for us today. Are we willing, are we ready to accept our calling? Are we willing to do the work? Amen. We're now going to move into our time of uh, the rights of our confirmation students. Uh, we move from asking, are you ready to celebrating with our 12 students that say, yes, yes, I am. I am ready. Parades are fun, but now, you know, they're not the end. Confirmation's not the end. It is the beginning, the beginning of your life of faith that will go throughout the rest of your life. And we are all so excited for you guys and for us. Hear these words of Holy Scripture. We are what God has made. We are what God has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Benjamin Sean Bogart. Charlie Dean Folk. And the mentors come on up as well when your students call. Maggie Rue Miller. Isaiah Stephen Nordby. Parker Rohde. Brennan Michael Shank Frank Clarissa Lynn Schrank Dawson Lee Whalert Samantha K. Webb Sophia Marie Webb. Noah Daniel Webster. And Brent Anthony Bowl. These are presented by the session for the reaffirmation of the baptismal covenant they now desire to profess their faith publicly and to accept greater responsibility in the life of the church and God's mission in the world. Thank you, Maynard. I didn't recognize this group earlier really this morning. I mean, that's how I normally see them. And that's, <laughs> it's like, who are you guys, right? It's wonderful. I just want to say, this has been such a wonderful confirmation class. Every one of these students is just 
I'm so excited for each and every one of them and the mentors we have had this year. Uh, we had a big class. We needed a lot of mentors. We had a wonderful, wonderful group of mentors. Thank you all so much. The relationship uh, between, yeah, clap your hands for that. That's it. <laughs> That relationship that is made between the mentor and the student is one that doesn't end at, at when confirmation is over, but carries on and is a significant one uh, for the students in their life. So much so that some of them come back precisely because of that to be mentors. So Devin, who I know had such a great relationship with his mentor, said, I want to be a mentor. And so that means now that Noah, some <laughs> I don't know, it's, it's scary for us to think this too. <laughs> it's going to come back and be a mentor someday. I can't wait to see you guys become mentors. That would be wonderful. This is a big, big day in your life. And it's a big day too in the life of the church. It is the day in which you are responding to your call of Christ and the leading of the Holy Spirit which began at the day of your baptism, which for some of you has been a long time ago, and now you have grown up, and now you're ready to take on the responsibility to be followers of Christ and to be members of not just Westminster, but the church universal. It's a huge step, and we are so excited for you and for our church. Now I get to ask you questions. Are you ready for the questions? Have you been studying hard? <laughs> All right. Turning in the gracious mercy, trust. I need my glasses, evidently. Sorry, let's try this again. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? If so, say, I do. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? If so, say, I do. I do. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? If so, say, I will with God's help. I will with God. mm, beautiful. Will you devote yourself to the church's teaching and fellowship? To the breaking of bread and the prayers? If so, say, I will with God's help. Now I'm going to ask the church uh, congregation to please stand as we um, confess our faith all together in the affirmation of faith. By the way, this if you've never seen this affirmation of faith, have, has anyone seen this particular affirmation of faith before? Good, I'm just che checking to see if you're honest, because this was written completely by the, Af by the confirmation class. These are all their words. Every single one is words from them, and as they wrote their individual statements of faith, and then I just put them together, but they're all in their words. Uh, so let's profess this together. We believe that there is one God who is all-loving and is the creator of all things. God is always with us. God listens to us when we struggle and hears our prayers. God has a plan for each of us and always gives us hope. We believe that Jesus Christ is our Savior who died on the cross to redeem us because he loves us so much. He is fully human and fully God. He teaches us how to live. We believe that the Holy Spirit is within us, dwelling in our hearts, sustaining our faith, guiding and protecting us. We believe that the church is not a physical place, but a holy gathering of people that cares for each other and prays for each other. This community follows the teachings of Christ by taking care of the world and doing what we can for people in need. 
We believe that the Bible is our guide for faith and practice. We believe that the Bible teaches us that everyone is our neighbor, and we are called to love them. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> they did a pretty good job. That's pretty impressive. Can you believe that, you guys? Oh, they said yes. They're modest, too. Just... In light of your uh, profession of faith today, I will now come and anoint you with oil and pray over you uh, because you have set yourself apart for life with Christ now. You have said that Christ is my Lord and my Savior, and I will follow him throughout my life. Some days will be easier than others doing that. But always, always, that is the goal we seek. And that anointing is sealing the Holy Spirit within you. As I do this, uh, each member of the class, the, the rest of the class said what they saw unique and gifted in that individual. And I will use the class's words in the descriptions, I know this is a little dangerous at times. Uh, the class is words in describing one another. So Ben, I guess I get to start with you. You are super curious. You always ask the hard question, which is very true, and you are creative. Charlie, the class said you are intelligent. Imagine that. You are. You're super intelligent. You are thoughtful. You are a deep thinker. And you are wise. And that's a hard word for someone your age to get. Most people never get to be called wise. That's really neat. in him in grace, love, and mercy. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Maggie, the class, used the words kind, sweet, good, very good. <laughs> and you are extremely thoughtful. And I have to apologize. She always gave me I, each week, the kids will turn in um, uh, uh, sermon notes, and they have little pictures on the side that they can doodle. Maggie uh, always, you know, some of them will doodle uh, uh, the choir or me or something. Maggie always gave me a doodle of her dad, which is great. And the best one, and I couldn't find it. I was so sad. I know I have it, but I, I must have separated from the rest of the sermon notes because I went through the sermon notes all la last night. She, she had a picture of him in his Indiana candy stripe pants. <laughs> I was going to put it on the screen for us all to enjoy. Oh, Lord. Uphold Maggie by your Holy Spirit. Increase in her the gifts of I was going to say, Isaiah looks so serious. I've never seen him not <laughs> smile. Okay, so Isaiah, I'll make sure I get this right. I know the first thing they said is friend. I don't know a higher honor you could get at your age than everyone says, you're our friend. And Isaiah, what else do they say? Um, great smile, unique <laughs> sense of style. <laughs> and you're just awesome. <laughs> Father, 
Jesus in the name of Jesus. Amen. Parker. Let's see what they say about you, Parker. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot. We made up a word for you, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. She's the only one who got honored with her own word. You are serious, both sweet and serious. <laughs> and I will say incredibly dependable. If Parker says she's going to do something, she does it, and she does it very, very well. and free and gives of love and grace and wisdom. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Brennan. Brennan has, this one I remember the first one they said, because he has a contagious laugh. They love your laugh. And that you are your own person. And was there one other one? that I know those two. And that you are very caring. I knew there was one important one I was forgetting. Brennan, oh Lord, uphold Brennan by your Holy Spirit. Increase and free in gifts of love and grace and wisdom. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay, Dawson, you're going to have to move a little forward. Dawson, you are funny. You are stealthy, they said. You are sensitive. And they kept coming back, that, and, and this, this is understandable today, they kept coming back and saying, we like your fashion. Right? <laughs> Usually, though, he's got a cowboy hat and a good belt buckle, right? right. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, Lord, uphold us by your Holy Spirit. Increase and free in gifts of grace, love, and wisdom. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All right, Sam, let's see. Funny, caring, intelligent, talkative. Can you believe that? But in a good way, the sense of everybody loves people who they can talk with, and you're gifted in that. Oh, Lord, increase in the name of the Holy Spirit. Increase and free your gifts of love, grace, and wisdom. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Clarissa, let's see. I mean, we, we only have a few minutes. Otherwise, we could go on forever, right? <laughs> that's, here, and by the way, oh, I haven't gotten to Brett yet, but Brett has a super vocabulary, so any of the big words you hear probably came from Brett. Here's one. You're resilient. I love that one, though. You're resilient. Uh, uh, helpful, you're thoughtful, you excel at so much, but you excel especially at annoying Noah, and we love that. <laughs> oh Lord, uphold Clarissa by your Holy Spirit. Increase and free your gifts of love, grace, and wisdom. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Sophia, let's see, we got, you're friendly, you're kind, you're hardworking, friendly, except for, you know, when everyone but your sister, I forgot to mention that, <laughs> and talkative, again, in a good way, which you are always there for people to, to come and to talk with. and free your gifts of love, joy, and wisdom. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, Noah. Look at it. He's ready. <laughs> Noah, let's see what we have. Enthusiastic. Uh, let's see. First to participate and to volunteer. Noah, whenever we'd ask, does anyone want to pray, Noah's hand would go straight up. I always have to wait to see if someone else wanted to pray first, but he was always there. Uh, confident, and we can't forget the last one, goofy. <laughs> Can you believe that? 
O Lord, uphold Noah by your Holy Spirit. Increase in him the gifts of wisdom and love and grace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Simba now. Simba, yeah. No, that's Brett. I'm going to hold him up. <laughs> All right, Brett. Whoa. Yeah, come on over here just a tad. Thank you. Brett, let's see. You are, you are flexible. You are kind. You are extremely curious. He hears everything, by the way. Uh, and let's see. Oh, yeah. How did I forget this? You have an absolutely great vocabulary. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Val is going down to uh, grab uh, a basket full of things for you each. Uh, and we will try to get the right one to the right person. This one's Brett. I know that. There you go, sir. Let's see. Sophia. Yep. You don't have one, of course, so this must be yours. Oh, you do. Hey. This one's Charlie's, so that one must be Ben's. Here you go, Charlie. Oh, this one's Dawson. I gave Dawson the wrong one. How did I read? I can't even read my own handwriting. This is really... Brennan. How did I get Dawson from that, Brennan? You got it? Well, you now have publicly professed your faith and expressed your intention to continue in the covenant that God made with you in your baptism. So now let's welcome them into the worship and ministry here at Westminster Presbyterian Church. How great is that? We have all these new members in our church, and I have instructed them, they understand that they are every bit a member as any one of you now, and they are ready to take on that responsibility, right? Oh, look at them, they're in Parker's, yeah, all right. <laughs> and we look forward to seeing them involved in so many ways now in the life of the church, just as you have been all year. Congratulations to you all. This is a wonderful day, and I am so proud of each and every one of you. Now I'd like to invite the ushers to come forward to receive our gifts to God.
praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Please pray with me. O oh Lord, on this day, there were many that offered you their cloaks, uh, offered waving branches in the air. Today, we come making an offering to you. Uh, the most important offering is the one of our lives. Our lives that we've seen dedicated to you in the form of our confirmation students, but ours as well. We ask that you would use this to bring glory to your name. As we pray in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. My name is Peggy McDaniels, and I'm a deacon here at Westminster. If your last name begins with W, then I am your deacon. Uh, before I call if, and see if there's any more um, joys or concerns, I just want to add one joy, and that is for this wonderful uh, group of um, confirmands. Uh, having been a mentor, I just want to... Uh, uh, add to the fact that uh, it was a joy working with that group and I think we've got a wonderful uh, new group of members and uh, just hope that all of you that were left in the pews when we were standing up there just appreciate that because I think they are a wonderful group. Uh, now are there others that uh, would like to uh, uh, share? I do have one other that was handed to me and that is uh, from um, uh, Reverend Daniel Joseph, um, who um, is from the Sudan, had asked for prayers. He left. He, uh, he did tell me he was leaving uh, for Sudan on a Tuesday, I think, was it, that he left. His family is sitting here with us, uh, some of them, and uh, uh, for safe travel. And uh, what was he doing in Sudan? Is he visiting... Uh, Sudan has had a lot of problems, and um, uh, a lot of uh, the weather has has caused a lot of problems. He showed me pictures from um, uh, uh, flooding and um, a lot of issues there. So um, he asked for prayers with um, what, whatever he could do there. So um, that was uh, one of the prayers. That, we want to be, one of the issues we want to have prayers for, and for um, Reverend Daniel too. Any other joys or concerns that um, we have? Yes, Deb. Yeah, I would just like to give an update on my sister. She just finished her chemo this week, mm -hmm. and the MRI and everything is showing great results. So everything's looking really good. She'll have surgery next month and then she'll have radiation after that. So she's doing very well. I also would like to thank everybody who um, sent cards and donations and phone calls when my mother passed away. It was so kind of everybody. Um, when I took the cards to meet with everybody, our family, my, I handed them my group of cards and they looked at me and went, holy smokes, how many? And I said, well, I got a great church and it feels wonderful. So mm. thank you so much to everybody. Okay, thank you. That's wonderful. Thanks, Deb. And your sister's on this list, and I'm trying to... S I need to have my glasses on to see. Um, tell me again what your sister's name is. Oh, here it is, Irene. Irene, okay. So Irene is, is doing better. Good. Anybody else that should be added to the list? Yes. I'd just like to share a joy. 
Um, I saw all these wonderful young people who were confirmed today. And I also have a wonderful granddaughter who got, she goes to Washington High School, and she got student of the month for the month of March. And that's, her class has approximately 300 students, and they pick two to be honor students. And she also is going to be inducted into the National Honor Society on Tuesday, April 20th, or March 26th. Wonderful. So I'm very proud of her and thankful that this church, you know, is considerate of her and, and everything. Thank you. Remind me of her name again. I should know. Marley. Marley. That's right. I'm sorry. That's great. Thank you for sharing that. Yes, Pastor David. Thank you, Tasha, for reminding me I needed to say something about my son. <laughs> Yesterday, he, he's the coach of, uh, there's a new kind of sport in the state of South Dakota, eSports, it's electronic sports. He's the coach of the Sioux Falls team. They won state in their two events yesterday, the first time we had a state competition. So congratulations, John. Now he decides to hide for the first time in his life. And he was in the paper, and David said he, he was misquoted, but I, I thought it was really cool. I'm reading along, and it says, Helene, wait a minute, Helene who, who, you know, and uh, that was neat. Uh, Tasha also reminded me that we have a grandson, Ethan, that goes to Jefferson High School, and he was also inducted into the National Honor Society, so real proud of Ethan. That's wonderful, so... Anybody else? We've got two, three people from, from the congregation that are special honors. That's great. Anybody else? All right, then let's go to prayer then. Out of the ashes, up from the dust, we bring our prayers to God, saying, In your steadfast love, O Lord, have mercy on us. God of all mercy, we pray for the church. On this day of triumph and tragedy, help us to bear witness to the saving grace of our suffering Lord. In your steadfast love, O Lord, have mercy on us. God of all mercy, we pray for the world. Help the victims of violence in every land. Give peace to those who live in fear and dignity to those who are despised. In your steadfast love, O Lord, have mercy on us. God of all mercy, we pray for this community. Teach us the self-emptying way of Jesus Christ. Humble the proud and lift up the lowly until we know that all are equal in your sight. In your steadfast love, O Lord, have mercy on us. God of all mercy, we pray for loved ones. We pray specially for those on our list. Marie Soul. Reverend Ken Newell, Virgil Engbright, the Whaler family, Bonnie Marquardt, Valerie Ehlers, Jan Nikolai, Harry and Oriette Kessel, Cheryl Hillbrands, Austin. We know that Irene Cardwell is doing better, but we continue to pray for her, Deb's sister. Trista. Kirsten Geard is friend. Shelley Taylor, Edie McKinnon, Dod Donald Mudloff, Jenna Anderson, Jane Hunt, Car Carol Handwerk, Jordan Hout, Tracy Botina, and Stacy and Jeff Bortz. Also, particularly pray for Reverend Daniel Joseph in his work in uh, the Sudan. Give him safe, safe travels and uh, give him wisdom in whatever he, he can do while he is there. Be gracious to all who are in distress. Hold their lives in your hand and look upon them with healing. In your steadfast love, O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Restore in us, O God, the joy of your salvation. 
renew and sustain our spirits so that we may live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our hope and strength, it is in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Stand if you are able and join us in singing hymn 88, All Glory, Laud, and Honor, verses 1 through 3. At the end of the service, the confirmation students will recess with me, and they will be in the back there, so you will be able to greet and congratulate them, and I hope you do so as you leave this morning. And also, as you leave this morning, my hope is that we will take the road that Jesus sets before us, that calls us to, one of vulnerability, one of uh, mercy, one of loving others, and that today won't just be another parade. Now receive your blessing. May God, who sustained our Lord Jesus in the hour of his trial, undergird you with faith, hope, and love throughout this Holy Week in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. The time has come, O oh Lord, for us to leave this place. Guide us then, protect us, and lead us in thy grace. Wherever life may take us, as we go our separate ways, help us share with others the things we've shared today. May the peace of God the Father and the love of Christ God's Son guide us in the 
days ahead and strengthen us each one. May the blessings of the Spirit fill us from within. God bless us and return us to this fellowship once again.